Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to recap Bitcoin. We've been following it very well over the last few weeks, calling the dips and the rises and the potential sideways action. So we're going to keep following that and then look at potential reasons for the recent dips in the market. Ethereum, new all-time highs, so we'll recap that. Uniswap version 3 coming out tomorrow and of course Dogecoin skyrocketing new all-time highs so if you're enjoying the content be sure to hit the subscribe button it does help out the channel a lot hit the bell notification icon as well because it allows you to get here before the scammers arrive like the video up if you find some value from the content it does go a very long way to pushing the video through the youtube algorithm and of course join me on instagram and twitter for updated news q and a's and updates of my portfolio so with that said let's dive in to the news. Thank you all very much for getting me to 127,000 subscribers. It's a wild journey here. We're looking for 130, 150. I'm sure we'll get there over time. Now I'm here because I want to mention these videos. We've got Bitcoin rally, then bearish signal looming. These ones obviously were on time with the daily actions. We're doing daily videos, so we're looking at the markets and seeing what we can see in the chart on a daily basis. So we got rejected, we fell. I remember seeing everyone else saying this is the most bullish thing they've seen. We're going to go to 70 or $80,000 Bitcoin. Now we're just taking a simple look at the chart and anyone can really do this with a bit of practice. This one here was a rally. We were 11 days down and we were due for a minor rally, which is exactly what we saw. It's not rocket science. It's really not that difficult. It's just not getting caught up in the emotional hype that a lot of people do. And of course, a couple of weeks earlier, we got the fall on Bitcoin. It was a video further back. Essentially, we were just looking at simple rules from GAN analysis, and I talk about that in every single video. So like I said at the beginning, if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that and hit the bell notification icon so you can be updated and learn about trading so that you can do better in cryptocurrency. Now, the days in question are yesterday, so we're going to look at that on the news. Then we saw a rise up into the 50% and a fail. So there's the 50% there. The day that we were looking at a crash was right here on the 18th of April and then the reversal here on the 26th. So we've called all that on the channel. This is the easiest parts to call. There are difficult times and I think we're going to come through a difficult time at the moment where it's kind of going to be sideways. So if you start seeing markets go up 10%, down 7%, up 4%, down 12%, this is potentially this time now. So I think it's going to get a little bit harder just to call it on the daily basis. But if you're holding long term, I, I personally don't think there's anything to worry about. I still think we've got a lot of upside potential here, but this may be the time that we stick around below the all time high for a little longer than we are used to. Currently from the all time high, we are down 21 days. This has been one of the longest periods. The previous period that we saw a fall from the all time high, it took 31 days to reach a new all-time high, but we only managed four days above the old all-time high before we closed under it again. Previous to that was a shorter period from February into March, and we broke out again after 20 days. And then the last one that most of us remember is January into February. And so that top to the breakout was about 31 days as well. So as you can see, we're at 21 days here. I suspect we're going to be underneath the all-time high longer than all of these periods, not combined, but just individually. So we had 31 days, about 20 days here, and about another 31 days here. This was something that I was talking about on the breakdown on the 18th, when we saw the market beginning to fall. I thought we were due for a bigger reset than all of these three previous occasions. This is healthy. This is good for the market. And I'll get into this in another video, either today or tomorrow. So stick around on the channel, hit the bell notification icon. I'll go into more detail on the technical analysis. If you're not following on YouTube, I've put a post up on there as well, mentioning first signs of weakness under 54K. We have just broken above it today, but the day hasn't closed. And then the key level for bullish momentum to continue is 60 and a half thousand. So I just wanted to recap that as well, because there's going to be wild volatility underneath this level. And I suspect we're going to reduce the volatility over time, but there is about a 20% range between the bullish momentum that I'm looking for, the key level, and then the current major low that we've got here. So anywhere in that, I think we're just trading sideways and I think alts are probably going to see the benefit of that. As for the news, this is possibly one of those reasons that Bitcoin dipped quite severely yesterday. Jeanette Yellen says interest rates may rise, Bitcoin dips. 
So the main reason here is that they are, have a high level of government spending. And essentially when you raise taxes, it's just to bring in some of that money. So the government creates money. Everyone in the space, obviously, and I don't think it's a great thing either, but creating a ton of money to put out into the economy, to boost the economy, the government has to then bring that back in so that there's not so much money out in the economy. So they're trying to create scarcity again. They're trying to remove the money supply. And that's what taxes are. They're just removing the money supply. It's unfortunate that it comes from our personal time, but that's a story for another day. Essentially, that's all that is happening here. They're trying to make it deflationary, then they inflate it, and then they deflate it. And that's what taxes are. So at the moment, the high levels of government spending are possibly going to bring in a modest interest rate rise. That may have shocked the market, dropped Bitcoin a little bit, but I think overall it's not going to do that much damage to the entire market space. So we need to be going up a lot more. But in that time, I think everyone's going to be very, very excited over these next few years, especially in the stock market and the real estate market. And that's going to boost us even further. For cryptocurrency, we might be on a slightly different cycle at the moment. So we're going to keep tracking that on the channel. So it may be that interest rates will have to rise somewhat to make sure our economy doesn't overheat. That's what Jeanette Yellen is saying. It could cause some very modest increases in interest rates to get that reallocation. That could make interest bearing securities more appealing, which would make them more attractive relative to digital currencies like Bitcoin and Ether. At any rate, I don't think it, I don't think that a modest increase in interest rates would have any huge impact on cryptocurrencies. I tend to agree with this. I think it's going to be pretty short lived or very small to the market. If there are major institutions that are questioning whether they should get into cryptocurrency or stay with bonds and earn a quarter of a percent interest, they're probably not ready for cryptocurrency anyway. Looking at coin market cap, we're at 2.2 trillion. Bitcoin is still sitting over its trillion dollars, even though it just slipped under the 54K. Ethereum, $380,000. This is looking fantastic on our ETH ratio. We are now at 37.48% of Bitcoin's value with a 6% value of Bitcoin itself. So this is the market cap. We're getting very close to our 50%. We should be at least here, meaning if there is that much being built on Ethereum and it's worth more than Bitcoin, modestly, we should be at least half of Bitcoin's market cap. Now, we've been following this for some time. I saw it as a bit of a joke thing on Twitter. And if you want to get it, Ratio Gang, it's just a little joke thing to have a look at on a daily basis. But we've been following this and we were down at 19% of Bitcoin's market cap. So this is one of the reasons why I think we probably will get to at least halfway at some point in the next cycle, maybe this cycle, who knows? I think we possibly will flip Bitcoin's market cap because we are beginning to get closer and closer to it over time. Let's wait and see. It's just an exciting little thing to look at. It's not going to make any difference to the market, in my opinion. I just think it's better investment to be in Ethereum than Bitcoin because of this reason. The rest of the market caps, we're looking at Dogecoin getting very close to Binance, which hit $100 billion last night. Dogecoin, $72 billion. XRP, 64. And we're going to look at Uniswap today as well, which is at $23 billion as version 3 is released today, or at least the 5th of May, Cinco de Mayo. Now, if you aren't following me on Twitter, go ahead and do that. There's a link in the description down below. I post a lot of stuff there, especially quicker trade ideas, or at least just looking at the market. Last night, we were looking at Litecoin breaking above its Bitcoin value, which has been held down for just over two years now. So this was our trend channel as well. This is a shorter period. And we've finally broken above the first trend and now the second tops, the second weekly top. So this is looking a little bit stronger. Also discuss the super cycle. This is brought up a lot and I'm thinking of using this because I see it as purely a buzz phrase. If you have uh, metrics or some sort of reasoning to figure out what is actually meant by a super cycle, I'd love to hear from you. Join uh, Twitter and mention your comments down here because at the moment I haven't found anyone that's been able to explain the exact measurable real metrics to what a super cycle is. I think it's just a hype word which could leave a lot of investors feeling pretty sorry for themselves if and when, well I would say when, we see a bear market. Because this tends to lead you to believe that we probably won't see a bear market. But with every night comes day and every day comes night. So there's always going to be a bear market after a bull market. The fear and greed index is sitting us at neutral, so at 48. Yesterday we were at greed, now back to neutral. and. This tends to just swing with Bitcoin's price. If we're down with Bitcoin, we drop from greed to neutral and then eventually to fearful. 
And if we're just sort of sitting in a trading range like we are now with Bitcoin, we tend to just bounce around the middle here. So I think this is probably not a bad point to be in for some sort of accumulation in other altcoins. And we've talked about those on the channel as well. So check out those videos after this one. And I leave a link to those at the end on the end card. So just click on those after this video. Uniswap version three comes out tomorrow. Here's what to expect. So there's a few points that they've mentioned here, what's coming out with Uniswap. In the last 24 hours, Uniswap reported trading volumes of nearly $1.9 billion. That's just in a 24 hour period. So Uniswap plans to improve the liquidity. It also wants to have the most flexible and efficient automated market maker ever designed. So this is going to improve the trading experience and of course the profitability for liquidity providers on Uniswap. That's going to bring more money, I believe, to the space of Uniswap. Maybe not the small retail investors who find the fees too high, but it's still going to increase the overall money coming into Uniswap because liquidity providers are going to be making more money and people are going to be able to trade more on Uniswap with larger amounts and it's all going to become more efficient. The other piece here is it's introducing easier and cheaper oracles, which make sure the price is up to date and therefore reduce the risk of getting burned by bad data. So it's improving the efficiency of the pricing on the decks. Now, I think this is usually overlooked by small retail investors because they just say, well, I can't trade on it. I can't afford it. Therefore, it's not going to work. But there's other options for those, obviously Binance Smart Chain, Pancake Swap, but there are other bigger players who aren't interested in being on a centralized exchange like Binance Smart Chain. So the bigger money is going to be on these DeFi plays and then the smaller money is going to be on Binance Smart Chain. That doesn't make either of them bad or good. Both are going to increase in value because of the increased usage. More big news for Bitcoin and Ethereum. So now you can buy a Banksy with Bitcoin or Ethereum from the auction houses here. Crypto exchange Coinbase enabled the arrangement with the painting estimated to sell for three to five million. So they're going to accept Bitcoin and Ethereum cryptocurrency. This is pretty big. So there's another article covering the same news, except we can see here that they are mentioning they host over 600 auctions annually, which means it's about 12 auctions a week. And if you were working seven days a week, that's nearly two per day. So two pretty big auctions worldwide per day being used, uh, payments being made in Bitcoin or Ethereum, or at least offered in Bitcoin and Ethereum. So again, we just look at the exposure with these sorts of connections. Established in 1744, it's the world's largest marketplace for art and luxury. Pretty big to be able to accept Bitcoin and Ethereum through Coinbase. If that wasn't big enough news for crypto, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum in particular, S&P Dow Jones launches Bitcoin and Ethereum indices. So this is three indices. One is going to be looking at the price of Bitcoin. One is going to be looking at the price of Ethereum. The third is going to be a combination of Bitcoin and Ethereum called the Mega Cap Index. So it's the SPCMC, which tracks BTC and ETH performance by market cap. So there's the two others of SP, BTC and SP ETH. This is again, bringing more awareness to cryptocurrency and it doesn't look like it's slowing down. There's more and more in the financial space, which is legitimizing cryptocurrency. Now to get a little bit of an understanding of the S&P Dow Jones, I've got this article here, which is off their website rather than off a cryptocurrency news website. So introductions, introducing the S&P cryptocurrency index. For us at S&P DJI, this is an exciting time because this new asset class is bringing unprecedented change to our financial ecosystem and the mindsets of market participants. Cryptocurrencies they're talking about here, are they new, evolving, not controlled by governments? This is mentioned on the S&P Dow Jones website. That's pretty big in my opinion with their look at how they, they're changing their mindsets towards cryptocurrencies in the traditional finance space. Now, more massive news for Dogecoin. This is printed today, so if you're seeing it in a few hours, probably old news, but there just seems to be more and more coming out for Doge. Gemini adds Dogecoin and the trading frenzy crashes Robinhood, which I don't think anyone's surprised about anymore. Cryptocurrency exchange Gemini listed Dogecoin today, so again, that just gets the Doge name out to more people. I think a lot of people hear about it or have heard about it already and they just want to buy some Doge. And if they don't have any other access to it, whatever they're using, they just wait until it comes onto that platform. And in this case for Gemini, CEO Tyler Winklevoss called it the people's money in a statement and sang praise of the meme coin. So it looks like he finally put it onto Gemini because it was 
really popular. Everyone wanted to be trading it and they don't want to get other apps. They just want to use the one app. Robinhood, a popular trading app, once again went down during the Dogecoin frenzy. So Dogecoin crashed Robinhood. Another popular exchange has listed Dogecoin, eToro. They've listed it. It's burst over 50 cents. More people trading Doge. It's kind of that way day in, day out for Dogecoin at the moment. This is probably going to be part of its demise as well. And I know I've been talking about that forever. I, I love Doge. I love the fun of it. I love how everyone's getting into it and it's bringing people to cryptocurrency. Then there's the other side of people who think it's probably a bad thing for crypto because a lot of people are going to get burnt eventually. So far, a lot of people have had great success from buying some of these dips, even though the price seems extremely high for uh, some old timers in the crypto space where Doge was not even worth like 0.1 of a cent. Now it's over 50 cents. It's one of the best performing assets of 2021 and you could all, almost say of all time. It has had that big of a gain since its inception. And we've also got the Doge Father coming out this weekend on Saturday, Saturday Night Live from Elon Musk. So is the Doge Father skit from Elon Musk going to be the event to end all of the rise and the gains in Dogecoin? I don't think so. I think we still have some more left in us. At the end of the day, the market for Doge is absolutely crazy. I'm just glad that a lot of people are enjoying themselves. We'll see what happens when we get those sharp corrections like we saw just a few days ago of 50% or more. One of my favorite projects, Solana. Multicoin launches a $100 million crypto fund with sites set on Solana DeFi. So I've talked about Solana a lot. I've got a video coming out on Solana later this evening. So make sure you subscribe to the channel bell notification icon so you can see that when it comes out. Now I'm going into the technicals in more detail on the video this evening, so make sure you've hit the subscribe. Let me know in the comments, is Solana on your radar? What other projects in the Solana ecosystem are you interested in? You know, on the channel, there's a few that I'm interested in, but I wanna hear from you guys in the comments down below. So in brief, Multicoin Capital says it's raised $100 million for its second venture fund. It plans to use the money to invest in a range of open finance and web three projects with a major focus on projects building on Solana. So I think we're going to see more of this good news just start to roll out on Solana. At the moment, Dogecoin is really getting that massive spotlight. Ethereum at new all-time highs getting the spotlight. And uh, amongst all of that, Solana is still beginning, it's still creeping up the ranks. And so I think once it gets the spotlight, we could just see a major rise in it. If it doesn't get the spotlight, we're still seeing rises without the spotlight. So I think it's positive either way. That can just be my bias. I'm going to leave the rest up to you guys. Do your own research and let us know what your thoughts are on Solana in the comments. Thank you very much for joining me on another cryptocurrency hopium free news video. Mouthful there. Like, share, subscribe. It does go a very long way to helping out the channel. And if you're still here, thank you very much. I'll see you on Twitter, Instagram. Free newsletter is down below, due out this week. So make sure you put your email address in completely free. Every two weeks, you get an email on the cryptocurrency market and investing and the finance world. Thanks once again, guys. I'll see you at the next one. Until then, have more fun to get more done.